Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and this is a recording of a webinar called Making the Most of Career Pilot and the Reporting Zone. So what I'm going to do is take you through some of the aspects of the reporting zone and show you how they could be useful to a school or college. I'm not going to go through Career Pilot in great detail, but just to give you a quick overview if you haven't seen it before. Career Pilot is a one-stop website helping 13 to 19 year olds get the information they need so they can plan their study and work. It's used by a lot of young people each month and they're very positive about how it helps them and what they learn from it. Career Pilot is co-funded by 20 universities across the south of England and is integrated into the work of six NCOPs, if you've heard of the NCOP projects. So Career Pilot is a whole suite of things that will support young people parents and advisors. So we have the student zone, the advisor zone where you can get lesson plans and materials, the parent zone, and now we have the reporting zone, which we launched in September 2017. You can use Career Pilot with any age group. It might be for years seven to nine, they just begin to explore all the choices available and they're thinking about how that information might be useful when they're choosing their GCSEs. Then at year 10, 11, they get into more, more detail Look at the choices, 16, 18. We also have a skills map they can use. Uh, we have a pre-16 version and also a post-16 version. So if you're 12 and 13 are using the site, they start to focus in much more on their decisions and look at the post-18 choices. And they can actually use the, the skills map to help them put their personal statements together. So here's a whole suite of resources that can be used at the center of your career program. Career Pilot maps to the career strategy and the career strategy guidance. And we have these uh, maps that we've done showing how it does that. We've got one to the career strategy guidance and also to the Gatsby benchmarks. Just to explain Career Pilot in a bit of detail, because we will be looking at this in terms of the reporting zone, the site has two parts. Information, which is lots of information about all the different pathways available to young people. And then the career tools. And the career tools is where the students can personalise their choices. So they can say what job sectors they're particularly interested in. But to do that, they have to register and they have to sign in if they're going to save their choices as they go through the system. So it's the career tools bit that populates the reporting zone. So if you haven't got information in the career tools area, so students haven't registered, they haven't added their choices, then you won't have anything in the reporting zone. To get access to a reporting zone, the school or college completes a data sharing agreement, which you get from me, uh, and then a password is issued to what we call the keeper of the password in that school or college, and they can set up additional passwords for other staff. If you are an NCOP, you can see all schools who give permission for you to be able to see their, their information. So, just a quick thing that might help teachers who are starting to use this actually get information into the career tools. On the home page, we've got these very quick start here guides for different age groups. So if a busy tutor was having to deliver a career path session, if they got the students to click on the appropriate one for their age, then there'll be five key things for them to do on Career Pilot. And they would include registration and having a look at information and they could be added to the the career tools while they're doing that. So this is the reporting zone. When you've got access to this, it'll be your, your school or college appear in there. And there are four things you could do. One is you can view all the registered users. You can add new staff and you can assign the staff to particular groups that they can look at. In school groups, this is where students will, when they register, put themselves in a year group. And then you can subdivide them into tutor groups or pupil premium or NCOP groups. And then you can assign your staff to see particular groups. I'm not going to talk about those two parts of the reporting zone in any detail in this session. But if you want to know more about that, in our advisor zone, in our user guides, there's one specifically about the role of the keeper and how you set up groups and passwords for other staff. The two things I'm going to talk about today are how you can view reports by an individual, 
but also by a group. And I'm going to start by showing you the school group reports and how they're created. So let's just look at the one related to job sectors and jobs. In Career Palette, we have 22 job sectors. We often start with students saying, have a look at the 22 and tag the ones you're particularly interested in. The way they do that, whenever there's a cross in the site, that means they can add their own ideas and choices. So they click on business admin in this case, and it'd say, would you like that added to your job sectors? They can identify whether they're just exploring this or definitely interested, which makes quite a difference to the sort of guidance you're going to give them if they're just exploring lots of things. Um, so it's useful to know that. Then they can look at any details of any job sectors, and this is what they'll see. The bits they particularly like are the job sector, the job profiles, because that's details of all the jobs. They click on there, there'll be loads of jobs they've never thought of before, so it can be quite inspirational. They click on the jobs, then it'll explain salaries, working hours, but also entry requirements. And it kind of re 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 reinforces the need for young people to get GCSE grades because that's what employers are looking for. So if a student is registered, they've indicated the job sectors they're interested in, in the career tools, under my job sectors, they can see the things they've tagged and also any jobs that they've looked at as well. So it's quick links back to all the things that are important to them. And that's what the Career Tools is trying to do, really, is their personal profile, personal record on the site. So they can come back and change these, delete these, um, as they move through the school and their ideas change. You can see reports by group. So as I explained, students will put themselves in a year group. You can add extra groups like tutor groups or NCOP groups. You can see how many students have registered already because they've registered themselves through the site. And you can click choose report and you'll have some options there. Obviously, the one we'd look at would be the job sector choices. But you can see all the different options there. We'll look at some of those as we go through. So for the job sectors, uh, you can see by student, the students are on the left hand side, what job sectors they're interested in, definitely, or just exploring. And this is kind of useful to know because what you can do then, if you've got an employer coming in to talk about a particular job sector, you could target that talk at particular students. And one other use for this is uh, we're finding is that low carbon and green, which is predicted to be a big growth area, certainly in the southwest, isn't getting many choices from students. And that might indicate they need some sort of input to understand more about that sector. You can also download the data. If you go right to the bottom of the report, there's an option to download. And you could create a spreadsheet. So it could be quite useful um, information to have numerically how many students are interested in a particular job sector with their names so you understand who you might target particular um, conversations opportunities at. So as we say, you can use it to plan those employer encounters that are mentioned in the careers statutory guidance, but you could do it in a very um, targeted way, which would look great for Ofsted, I should think. Um, but you could also target particular talks at, you know, if young people are not understanding about a particular job sector. You can also, in the group report, see what students have completed. So that's useful to look at if you've just done a career path session. It's useful to see what they've actually done some work on. Always from here, you can see their full report. So if you click there by student, you could see any of the answers they've given against those things. This the qualification planner leads to another report. So I'm just going to show you that to you now. Um, so the qualification planner has all qualifications from level one to eight in the different pathways: academic, vocational, and work-based. Students can, if they're registered, tag the ones that they've done the ones that they're doing and the ones they're considering. So they can sort of plot their route, hopefully, you know, right up to level four, five, six, um, which obviously wouldn't be suitable for everybody, but we try to show them all the different options and routes they can take to higher education level, should they choose to do it before 18 uh, or maybe when they're older. If they're interested in, sorry, I'll just go back there. If they want to find out what that qualification is, they can just click on it and it does explain what it is. So if the students have tagged some qualifications in my qualifications, they can see what they've added. And this is where they can add their subject details. 
So this is where they can say, okay, level one or level two, whatever it might be. And um, these are the subjects I did and these are the grades I think I might get or the grades I've actually got. So they can build up their own record of the things they're doing as well. And this can change over time. If you work with your 10, it's a prediction, obviously. And then when they get to your 12, it's an actual grade. So they keep changing this as they move through. Oh, sorry, I'm just going <laughs> to go back. Um, so if you want to see that report about qualifications, it looks like this. And you can see whether they are they done it, doing it, considering it. Um, and you get a bit of an idea about who's thinking of going up to those higher levels. And, you know, maybe there'll be some student there who hasn't thought of that and you know they have the potential. So that might indicate a need to do some sort of interventions. So you can report, use that report to find out what pathway they're interested in, and then you can offer them the relevant information and support. Another report is through Find a Provider. So this links to all the providers in the south of England, universities, colleges, quite a lot of training providers, not all of them, schools, schools with sixth form. Now if you, this is the map view. If you look in the list view, this is where students can tag the providers they're interested in. So they can choose any universities they might be considering. They can actually start with the school they're actually in at the moment, what they think they're doing, post 16, which provider might they go to, and they're going to have multiple choices. And they'll just be sort of considering them, or they can say whether they've actually um, they've applied. So it's doing this, considering this, or applied. So again, you can get a bit of an idea on the report uh, about who they, where they're thinking of go in and you know this is something that year 12s might be looking at um, or year 11s might be looking at for post 16 but year 10s wouldn't necessarily do this um, early on unless they had a particular provider in mind but again it's good to get them thinking about that um, and in our site they can actually explore each of the providers and look at their courses and other key information about each of the providers from career pilot again this is all downloadable so as I mentioned, it's key that they register, otherwise there'll be nothing, uh, they won't be able to save, so there won't be anything in your reporting zone. So they register here, and then they can build up that bank of the providers, job sectors, qualifications they're interested in. They can bookmark any information page as well. And there's a few other things they can do too. My next steps is a quiz about their intentions, and then the skills map helps them to think about the skills they've got. So I'm just going to show you those quickly. So my next steps has only got um, five questions, all about how likely they are to go to level three and then higher education. Thinking about you know what might be the benefits of higher education, how do they see it? Uh, what do they need to know more about in terms of higher education and what would put them off? And that's really useful information because it just shows what their intentions are, but also what their barriers might potentially be. So, in the group report, it doesn't look very pretty, this report, because it is like a free text. Some of it, uh, there's a range of answers, so it's quite hard to just get down to a little tick. But what you can do is look at the responses of each student against each of those things. And what it will indicate is what students need help with, and what barriers there might be to their progression. So you can actually intervene. So I've shown you the reports by group. There are also reports by individual. And this is where you can see everything the student has done individually. And some of those things, like the HE Skills Map, you can only see through the individual user report. So if you click on individual, and uh, then this is what you'll see. So you've got a few other things here. We've got the advisor comments, which I'm going to show you, and then any of the skills map results as well. So if I start with the skills map, now if you haven't seen the skills map before, we put this together because in our experience if you ask students of any age what your skills are, they're not very good at being able to tell you what they are or what even they've done in their life that might actually have helped them to develop skills. So this is a quick way to help them do just that. So ask them some questions about things they've already done in their life, in their learning, uh, through school, and they tick them, like I've completed a work experience placement. And they're all things that require them to be responsible, 
uh, be independent, make judgments. So high level skills. So they answer the questions and then it shows them what they've said. I've completed a work experience placement, but it shows them what skills they probably used when they did that. So for work experience, you have to be independent, planning, teamwork, time management. Just giving them their language to be able to describe themselves. But what also happens is the skills that we've mapped to the questions we've asked them get put in what we call the skills bank. So in the skills bank, you'll see our list of skills. Currently, we have 13. From September, we're going to extend this list. The match just means there's six questions related to each of these. And in this case, the student um, hit for teamwork three of those questions, which give them a 50% match. So they've got three examples from the quiz. But the idea is they keep adding their own. So this is something they should keep returning to, adding more examples of the activities they're doing and the skills they are developing through those things. So as an example, you click there, you could put in things like, I've worked in Waitrose part-time for two years, and then indicate which skills that's helped you develop. So maybe three or four of the skills. So now, in your skills bank, you've got examples from the quiz, and also examples you've added yourself. This is where young people could recall record the employer encounters they're going to be required to have through the career, new career statutory guidance. So that after that, after they've had an opportunity, they could go in and say what the opportunity is and what skills it helps them develop. So they're building up this whole um, bank of information that they can use later. So when they come to apply and of courses and jobs, they could say what they're applying for and indicate the skills they most need to flag up for that particular um, job or course. So it might be quite different if you're going to be a nurse or if you're going to do economics. And then you have all your skills bank examples there to help you get started. And you want to fine tune it from there, but at least it gives you lots of ideas, lots of examples of activities you've done that'll help you get started. So the reports by individual, uh, the student can see everything they've done through their downloadable report, which they can view online, download, save, send to somebody else. What you can also add to the individual report is what's now called advisor comments, and I'll show you how to do that. So you can have a conversation, evidence of a conversation you've had with young people. So if you're offering one-to-one -one guidance, it can work with that if you're offering one-to-one -one through tutorials you can add a comment there so you can use this as a way of recording all that information related to their career planning so the way you can add a report is by individual you saw i think that it said advisor comment if you click on that you can see anything any comments anybody else has added to that student and then you can add your comment as well and we've used it a lot in one-to-one -one situations where we're working intensively with students across NCOPs, offering, in fact, in one area, one hour career pilot sessions, uh, where we take them right through the things I've shown you today. But we also talk about their intentions and ambitions in terms of job sectors and help them get information through the site and identify some action points, which are then picked up by the school and they might record what they've done with the student. So it can really dovetail with your one-to-one -one sessions or your tutor group sessions. So just a quick summary. Those are all the reports. But if I give you a summary of the reporting zone, the processes and the roles, uh, the way the schools access uh, the reporting zone is by completing the data sharing agreement, which you can get from me. Then we send you a password to a specific person who is designated as the password keeper. Students do not get registered by you. They register directly through the site by clicking on the button I showed you in the top right-hand corner. Uh, and as part of the registration, they'll put themselves in your group. Then the keeper, the keeper of the password, can set up additional groups. So you can subdivide your 11 into six tutor groups and an NCOP group. So students could be in multiple groups at the same time. And then you can just look at reports for that particular group. So if it's a pupil premium group, you could just put them into a group and just see their results. The keeper then can then set up other staff and give them access to a specific group. So it might be that I just get access to 11SL, and that's all I'll ever see in the site because that's the relevant bit. So it's the keeper who will organise that. 
when staff have access, they can see the reports of any student that they've got access to, and they can also add advisor comments to a student's report. So it might be, you might be um, keen to have a little play on the student side, and we don't want you to use your email address because we want you to keep that for the reporting zone because you can only use an email address once in the site. So what I'm going to show you is how you can have what we call a dummy login um, so you can actually have a little play in the student area. So what you'll do is go and register just like any other student on the main site, top right hand corner. So you can put your own details in. But when it comes to the request for you to add an email, don't put your own in. Put your name at normail.com because that will create an email that isn't recognised and isn't going to affect any live data. So mine will be suelewis at normail.com. If you want to see the post-16 skills map, you need to choose the post-16 year group or pre-16 group if you want to see the pre-16 version. Don't put yourself in your own school. Put yourself in my training school where you can have a little play and it doesn't affect any live data. Just one or two other things to tell you before I wrap up. Um, super users, we try, we're really keen to get schools to become super users. And all you have to do to become a super user is request free materials. Um, we've got stickers, cards, posters from us. You need to have a link to Career Palette on your website. You need to have over 100 registrations or active users each academic year. And you need to have told parents about Career Palette in some way through a newsletter, through parents, whatever it might be. If you become a super user, you get a poster, which you could show useful for Ofsted. And you get obviously uh, maps to show how career path links with the career statutory guidance and also the Gatsby benchmarks. We do offer some free things from our, the Central Career Path team, which are based at the University of Bath. We offer free staff training, and we can, we can do webinars specifically for your staff team. If you're some distance from us, or face to face, if you're in the Bath Bristol area, as I mentioned, free promotional materials, free free. Web webinars, this is one of them, but there are other topics too, and then free access to reporting zone. You can make all those requests for free things from the Career Pilot Advisor zone, which is on the top left of the main screen of the home page. So I'm just going to wrap up by telling you that um, Career Pilot recently was given a Careers and Employability Website Award from the Careers Development Institute. So we are an award-winning website now, which I'm very pleased to say. If you want to get in touch, you can do that through the careerpilot at bath.ac.uk address. And if you do decide you want access to the reporting zone, we also have a helpline, and that helpline um, is there to help you with any reporting zone issues. So thank you so much for attending the webinar, and I hope it's been useful. Um,